Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session ARC317, Application Performance Management, or APM on AWS. My name is Marcos Ortiz. I'm a solutions architect out of Houston, Texas, working with enterprise customers. Uh, I've been with AWS for a little bit over a year right now, but before that, I've been developing, designing, deploying, and monitoring applications on the platform for the past five years. So hopefully I can share some experience with you. So before we move forward, uh, I'd like to have an idea. How many developers we have here? Nice. How many architects? Sysadmins or DevOps or support guys? Cool. Thanks. So what can you expect from the session? Uh, this is a 300 level session. Uh, we'll start looking at some industry trends in monitoring today, more specifically application monitoring, why APM is important. Hopefully, most of you guys are already convinced about this, but for those that are not, we're gonna talk about that. Then we're gonna move into the how how can you perform and implement APM on AWS using tools such as CloudWatch for custom metrics, CloudWatch logs, uh, AWS X-rays, so you can get meaningful insights about your applications and react upon those. Then we're gonna move for a demo. We're gonna put it all together, all those concepts together, and we're gonna have a demo. Uh, the demo is gonna play it out of a video here but the content of that demo is already on a GitHub repo, so I strongly encourage you guys to go there, clone the repo, try it out in your own AWS accounts, and let us know how it works out. Then we're gonna wrap it up by discussing some of the best practices when implementing APM on AWS. So the whole purpose of this talk is like to give you an idea of how to use the different services to implement APM on AWS, we're not gonna be extensively describing what CloudWatch is, what X-Ray is, but even if you guys don't have an idea what those services does, we're gonna do a quick overview before we actually use them on the demo. So, why APM is important? That's simple. Every application is unique. There are just too many variables that make every single application unique so we use different programming languages, different frameworks, they have external dependencies, different libraries, uh, they have different performance requirements and constraints. You might have different architectures from monolithics to three-tier web apps, containers or serverless. You might talk to external services on a synchronous or on an asynchronous ways, or you might use different protocols to talk to those services like request and response, publish, subscribe, how do you take all of that into consideration to monitor applications? So a lot of times when I talk to customers and colleagues, I see a lot of people monitoring their application just by using those, those custom infrastructure metrics, such as CPU utilization, memory, disk I.O., network I.O. That's just not enough because every single application is different. So, I'm a big sports fan, so I like to do an analogy. Let's say you are a general manager of a basketball team, and you're just monitoring your application with custom, if, if, with infrastructure metrics. That's kind of like as you as a GM, the only information that you have available about your team is the partial score for each game in the season after each quarter. So how can you get insights about your team to make it better to trade players and what so forth? Now, if you have custom metrics carefully thought for your application workload, now the game changes. It's like as a GM now, you have the player stats through the games, you have the team ranking so you know how your team is playing against the best offensive teams in the league, against the best defensive teams in the league, so it's a whole new game. So it's really, really important to have custom metrics out of your ap applications, right? Uh, how many of you guys are running uh, applications on AWS that you have access to the source code, so you build that and deploy that? 
How many of you guys have legacy applications that you don't want to touch that code? How many of you guys are running third-party applications that you just don't have access to the source code so you cannot introduce custom metrics? Right, we're gonna try to cover some of those scenarios here. Uh, but the one thing to take out of this presentation, if you want, you're gonna take one thing, is like, we need custom metrics, right? But more important than having custom metrics is choosing meaningful metrics. So as a GM of my basketball team, it's awesome to have all of those stats that I talked about, but like if I choose wrong stats, such as like how many steps a player is making during a game, or how many times the player is jumping, it's meaningful, right? So you really need to think carefully uh, when you're about, let's say, to introduce custom metrics into your application, what are the key performance indicators or KPIs that you like to measure uh, across a period of time on your application, and how can you introduce those and make those available on AWS? So whenever we talk about monitoring with customers, I always make these questions. Do you think you really know your application? So, and then I have several follow-up questions such as, do you know what are the infrastructure changes uh, impacting, what are the impact on infrastructure changes to your application? Like if you change an EC2 instance type or EBS volume, how does that impact your application? What are the bottlenecks on, on your application? And when you have a bottleneck, where on the stack is that? Is that on the application layer? Is that on the persistence layer? And if it's on the application layer, what specific module or sub-module or method or function is causing that? How does your application behave uh, with different traffic volumes? If you have spikes or if you have like a huge volume of traffic coming in on a continuous way, how does your application behave? Do you have a specific module of your application that is affected more than other? Does that depend on the input params that are being sent as requests to your applications? When and how you auto-scale your application? Oftentimes we see people selecting metrics such as network out or uh, CPU utilization for their auto-scaling group. But again, this is not a one-size-fits-all. So let's say you have an application that is a background daemon that is consuming an in-memory queue. So it's pretty much okay for you to have like 75 to 95% utilization on CPU for that workload as long as you're not growing that queue size, right? So you wanna make sure you're not over-provisioning uh, EC2 instances so you're paying for what you need. So maybe putting a, a, a metric of CPU utilization with a threshold of 75% is not the best metric for triggering out a scaling. Maybe you wanna do a custom metric which is the queue size and you wanna make sure that queue size is as close to zero as possible. And if it grows out of a, a specific threshold, then you start scaling out your application, right? How does your application behave uh, as you release new versions? Like nowadays, a lot of people are doing CI, CD, DevOps, Agile uh, de uh, development life cycles. So people are delivering new versions like several times a day. How is your bottlenecks, are they improving? Are you reducing latency as you, as you introduce new versions? Are you introducing uh, higher error rates with new versions if you change a persistent layer on your stack or something like that? Error rates, what are the error rates of your application? Are they uh, tied to a specific subservice or sub-module, or they're tied to a specific technology stack that you're using in your application. All of those questions you should be able to answer if you have the right metrics in place. So, bottom line is that you cannot manage uh, what you don't know. And if you don't measure it, you don't know it. If you don't know it, you cannot manage that. So again, custom metrics whenever possible. So hopefully everyone is on the same page, like we need to monitor application on a tailored way. We need to select proper KPIs or custom metrics that make sense for us to act upon those. But what else is changing in monitoring nowadays? Applications are getting more complex every single day. 
Uh, they're being uh, deployed in a distributed way. They talk lots of protocols with lots of external services. How do you take all of that into place when you're monitoring your application? Applications are more and more dynamic. Maybe like we have some cases where something that you're monitoring minutes ago or seconds ago doesn't even exist anymore. For instance, Lambda functions, containers, or even EC2 instances. You have an auto scaling group, you have a spike in traffic, so you created a new instance. That new instance received a request that triggered an error, and you need that log on that instance. But you scale back in, and that instance doesn't exist anymore. How do you access that log? How do you do root cause analysis there? Last but not least, uh, we have an increasing uh, business impact coming from the applications more and more. Uh, lots of companies, they say, I'm not a tech company at the core, but they're leveraging technology, applications, and automations to achieve their business goals. So more and more applications are uh, very close to their business goals. That means that it's even more important to properly uh, monitor those uh, with the right metrics, right? Okay, so we talk about the why APM. Now we're getting to the how do you do APM on AWS, right? Uh, we're gonna be talking here mainly about three technologies on AWS. First is how can you send custom metrics to CloudWatch? What is a metric, by the way? It's just a measurement of an event. It's a value over time. For instance, it can be a counter, it can be throughput, error rate, request rate, and, and so forth. So how can we leverage CloudWatch within our applications to send metrics, custom metrics to CloudWatch? Then we need to leverage logs. So nowadays we have several instances of applications running everywhere. How do you aggregate all those logs in the same place so you can query those? How can you create custom metrics out of logs? Uh, I asked you guys a, a little bit earlier today, like if you have like third party software that you cannot change the source code, or if you have legacy application that people developed 15 years ago, they're not even in the company anymore. No one wants to touch that code to instrument adding custom metrics. How can you create custom metrics out of logs? So if you know pretty much the log format and the log patterns, we have technologies on CloudWatch logs that enables you to create custom metrics out of those logs. And last but not least important, uh, we're gonna talk about how can you, how can you send tracing information uh, by using AWS X-Ray. So AWS X-Ray provides you trace information, so if you have a spike on, on the response time of a specific request to a specific service, why did, like, let's say the average response time was like 10 milliseconds and out of a sudden it took like 10 seconds. Okay, you know you had a spike, but the question is, where's the bottleneck? So the X-Ray trace will let you know that. And, and you also have like a service map so nowadays we have like distributed application, microservices architecture. You're interacting with a lot of AWS services as well. So X-Ray provides you like a service map so you can see what services are being directly called by your end users and when they're called, which services they interact with. Uh, we're gonna see all that in the demo. So let's start with the first things. Uh, we're gonna talk about sending custom metrics uh, to CloudWatch. The challenge, we wanna send custom metrics to CloudWatch, but to do that, we need to call a put metric data, which is a synchronous HTTP request, right? So with that, if every time your application is running, let's say you wanna register a counter or you wanna register how long that specific operation took, and you need to send an HTTP call to CloudWatch API, and wait for that request response so you can start doing things again, you're introducing lots of latency into your application. It's just not feasible, it doesn't work. What is the solution? Uh, use a UDP daemon, a, a UDP agent like CollectD, an open source one, that's the one we're gonna use in the demo. We have Logstash as well that had input plugins for uh, 
UDP and output plugin starts to send in that information to CloudWatch. Uh, and we have some links on the bottom of the slide for those. And how does it look like if you want to introduce that to your application? So let's say you have your AWS account and you have an EC2 instance and your application is running on that EC2 instance. All you need to do is to install a UDP daemon and that can be like, and this is a very common pattern with third party vendors on, on the APN space as well. Uh, we're not reinventing the wheel here. So as your application is running, it's generating metrics and reporting those metrics by sending UDP requests to a local agent installed on that same box. That UDP request is fire and forget. So you, you, you're virtually not introducing any latency into your application, right? In reality, you're introducing microseconds of delays, maybe one or two milliseconds, which is totally fine for most of the applications, right? Uh, then behind the scenes, uh, the daemon is asynchronously uh, collecting all that information, calling put metric data, and sending all of that information uh, to CloudWatch, and now you can see all of those beautiful custom metrics, right? So with this architecture, you decouple metric aggregation from API and API calls from your application logic. So your application keeps running as fast as you can, and all it's doing is sending metrics to a local uh, agent through UDP, and again, fire and forget so we don't introduce latency into your code. The same thing can run outside of an AWS account, so you can run that, say, on your on-prem environment. As long as uh, that application is on a server uh, that has internet access, and it has the right credentials to talk to your CloudWatch uh, API, it's exactly the same setup. Uh, you're gonna make your metrics available into CloudWatch, and then your support, sysadmin, and DevOps team can just log in through the management console or using our APIs to consume those metrics. How, now, let's say you cannot have access to the source code, or you don't want to change the source code, uh, being that a legacy application, or you have a, a third-party application, how can you create custom metrics out of logs? So when we talk about logs, we have those challenges, how you can get all of those logs for all of those instances into a central location. How can you archive all that? Uh, and how can you make custom metrics out of logs since you don't have source code access uh, to instrument that code? The solution is to use CloudWatch Logs Agent. CloudWatch Logs Agent uh, architecture. We're gonna talk about this exactly now. So pretty much the same uh, architecture as before. So you have your application running on your AWS account, for, in, for example, on an EC2 instance. And as your application is running, it's generating log data. It's logging to log files, right? That can be your application, your custom application, third-party application, or that legacy application. Then all you do is you install CloudWatch Logs Agent, and when you install CloudWatch Logs Agent, you tell it, okay, I need you to monitor those logs, and what it does is like, whenever new lines are being written to those log files, it's listening for that and getting that information in order to send it to CloudWatch Logs. So, your application logs exactly as it does today to log files and behind the scene CloudWatch logs is getting those new log lines, aggregating that data and sending that by, by, through our HTTPS calls in a total decoupled way so you don't introduce any more latencies in your application as well. So no need to change your code. And the same thing can be run on on, on your on-prem environment. So as long as you have internet access and the right credentials to talk to your AWS account, you can install CloudWatch Logs Agent on, your, uh, on the field or on your on-prem environment, and everything, every setup is the same. Then your sysop, sysadmin, DevOps, or support people can access those logs through the console or through the APIs. We're gonna take uh, questions after, sorry. So, Fine, so you install CloudWatch logs, you make the logs available on CloudWatch on your AWS account, 
then how do you create metrics once the logs are available? So you use a feature called metric filter. So once the logs are available, you can create, you can select, okay, for this log group or for this log stream, I want to create those metric filters. So whenever I have a, a, a log line that matches a specific pattern, I want to generate this metric with this name and this value, right? It works for space delimited logs and JSON log files. And just to give you guys an example, uh, on the left hand side here, uh, we have CloudWatch logs. Uh, all, all your logs are arriving because CloudWatch logs agent is sending those. Then on the right hand side, on bullet number one, you specify, uh, uh, you specify a filter pattern that is, I want to, all the lines that match this pattern, I want to create metrics out of those. Then you can select logs that are already there, or you can copy and paste on that text area custom logs that you might have just to test if your pattern is working. So once you click that bullet number two there, test pattern, you're gonna, hit, you're gonna see some examples of matches from the logs on that text area, and then you click on the link, show results, you see a table of the matches, and those are the values that you have available for creating metrics. For example, let's say I have the, this following log file here. Notice that these, a lot of customers think that they cannot create custom metrics out of logs that don't have exactly the same format in every single line. So for example, web servers like Apache or Nginx, if you look at their access log, they, you can configure those to have always the same format for every single line, like client IP, HTTP verb, response code, and whatsoever. Notice that these log file have different formats, for instance, uh, if you look at the info lines, they're reporting two values. And if you look at the error lines, they're reporting an error message. So let's say you want to get those values for the info lines. All you need to do is create the following uh, uh, filter pattern. And then you say, I want everything that is info. So this is the match that you're going to have. So now you have uh, the values for a specific item count or elapsed time for a specific task that you can use to plot that over time uh, by using CloudWatch. So you're making CloudWatch custom metrics out of your log files. The same thing, the same logs, but now you want to process error messages. Maybe you want to count for error rates. So you just filter for error, and these are the values that you have. And if you're talking about like an example of a JSON file that we might have, the filter pattern changes a little bit, so basically select the variable or the key and the value, then you have the matches, and you can pretty much access any field on that JSON uh, document by using their keys. Uh, one, another good feature when we talk about CloudWatch logs is uh, log subscription. So basically, again, you set up your, your application, you install CloudWatch logs agent, all the logs are arriving in your AWS account. So now you can set up subscription to those logs, for instance, to send them to Amazon Elasticsearch. So a lot of customers do this to, to keep uh, hot and warm data there so they can do free text search for root cause analysis or troubleshooting or support, right? Uh, once that data is now cold, let's say after 30, 60, 90 days, you can delete that from cloud, from Elasticsearch, or you can dump that to S3, and that S3 bucket will have a lifecycle policy that will move that to Glacier, and the rest, all you guys know. You can also subscribe that log to a Lambda function. And the reasons why you might wanna do that is like if you wanna do, if you wanna implement complex uh, parsing logics before creating your metrics, that might not be easy enough to do on the metric filters. So let's say you have several values, but you want to create a specific custom metrics that will do calculations based on those values to generate a final value. So you might wanna use a lambda function for that. Or you might wanna look for specific log entries and values, and whenever a match happens, you wanna interact with other AWS services let's say to write something to an SQS queue or write something to a DynamoDB table, whatever you wanna do. 
You also, you might want to do anything else that you can do through coding. You might want to do that on, on a Lambda function. So let's say you have a specific log values that whenever the matching happens, you want to call your internal ticketing system or you want to call your notification system. So you can call that through the Lambda function as well. I want to call out as well CloudWatch dashboards. Uh, most of our customers have some third-party monitoring solutions, but even if you do so, I strongly encourage them, whenever you, de you deliver your application, try to deliver some custom metrics and CloudWatch, da CloudWatch dashboards as well, because then it makes it easier for support people, CZ means, or other teams to figure out what are important things that they might want to monitor into your application. So let's say you have a template a dashboard that has like 50 metrics there, and it might make sense for a specific support team just to get 10 of those, but they get the big picture, they can copy and paste that dashboard for their own, account, for their own users, and they can tailor that dashboard for their needs, right? So you can basically monitor multiple resources in a single view. You can cross-match custom metrics with uh, custom AWS metrics like EC2 metrics or let's say Kinesis Streams metrics, whatever services you're using. And you can also monitor uh, resources spread across different regions as well. It doesn't need to be, oh, if I create a uh, dashboard in US East 1, I can only monitor resources that are running on that region. No, that's not the case. So we talk about sending custom metrics through UDP or logging log lines. So I thought it would be interesting to show up some uh, latency benchmark with, uh, this is a Ruby script that I wrote. And again, it's available on the repo. So basically you pass an input param. Uh, in this case, I'm passing like a million. Uh, if you don't pass, I guess the default is 100,000. But basically when you run this script, what it's gonna do, let's say I'm passing a million here, it's gonna log a million lines in the log file and calculate the time that it took. And after that, it's gonna send a million UDP packages to that local UDP agent and, and calculate how many time it took. So I run that on a T2 micro. Uh, the UDP uh, send, whoops, sending uh, one million uh, log lines uh, took 7.4 seconds uh, for UDP. Uh, and writing uh, that one million logs, uh, log lines on the log took 15.5 seconds. Uh, if you scale up that instance to an M4 large, UDP takes 4.3 seconds and logging takes 13.92 uh, seconds. I know there's a lot of variables that influence uh, things like that, like what programming language you're using, what logging framework you're using, uh, but usually sending metrics through UDP, if you can, will be faster than logging lines. Because also when you're logging, you log a lot of things, not only what you need, like you log timestamps, you log the severity, and, and a few other variables. And on the other hand, when you're sending UDP packages, you're basically sending the timestamp, the, the metric name or ID, and the value tell. Last but not least, uh, AWS X-Ray. Uh, so let's say we have here an application that is running uh, behind uh, API Gateway. So my users interact with that through the mobile phone, send a request to API Gateway that then calls the Lambda function that interacts, let's say, with DynamoDB and SQS, an SQS queue. So X-Ray, we call trace the whole end-to-end -end interaction from the user sending the request until the response gets back to the user. That's what we call a trace. Within a trace, we can have segments. So one segment can be the API gateway interaction, another segment can be the Lambda function logic. And within a segment, we can have uh, sub-segments. So let's say our Lambda function execution has two sub-segments, which is interacting with SQS and interacting with Dynamo. So why is that important? So again, getting back to that spike on the response time. So let's say the response time is spiking. If I have that trace information, I know that a specific method on my API is taking a long time to process. 
but now I can go on x-ray and say, where's the bottleneck? Is that my lambda function logic parsing input params? Is that interacting with SQS, or is that interacting with Dynamo? If it's DynamoDB that is taking long, maybe I have the wrong indexes, maybe I have the wrong capacity units, I only provision that. So you have a, a, a quick insight about that. And this is what it looks like on, on, on X-ray. So on the top you have like, okay, your operation took this amount of time, and the subtests, they took those, those amount of times. So you can quickly identify bottlenecks here, and that's, that's priceless, especially when you are on an emergency or on a case that you need faster response. Usually I see a lot of customers say, oh, I have a spike here. Uh, I need to go to the log lines and see, oh, let me see the timestamp when I started that operation was T0, and then a lot of log lines were logged, and then I finally have a T1 here. What is the difference? Okay, it's taking five seconds. Now where's the bottle, bottleneck in between that? So it takes a lot of time. It just doesn't scale. And also it provides you like a, a service graph that gives you like insights on the fly in real time. Uh, uh, what, what are the services that are being uh, directly called by your end users? So you can have the, you have the users on the uh, left hand side there. And each one of those circles are services, right? So you have two services that are exposed to your end users. And whenever they call those services, they call all other internal services, right? So you have, you have some insights of which services call each other. And not only that, inside each circle you have the average execution time for that service. And on the colors of the circle, uh, you can get a feeling of error rates. So if you have a circle that is all green, that means you have zero errors. But if you have a circle that has more yellows or more reds, that means you have greater error rates there. That gives you like a, a, a quick insight just by looking at that map or that graph about how things are going on. So how do you use X-Ray into your apps? So we talk about using, uh, sending custom metrics to your UDP daemon. We talk about using, sending your logs to CloudWatch by using CloudWatch Logs Agent. How do you send data? How do you send tracing information to X-Ray? Same scenario, you have your application running on an EC2 instance on your AWS account. You install the X-Ray daemon. By the way, for those of you running, for instance, Lambda, the X-Ray daemon is available for Lambda as well. So the same logic applies into the code. Uh, what is the easiest way to send tracing data to X-Ray? Use the X-Ray SDK. The X-Ray provides SDKs uh, for Node.js, Java, and Python. I don't know if they released something new, but I, I think that's it so far. Uh, and then I see a lot of customers saying, hey, I cannot use X-Ray because I'm using, let's say, Ruby, and it doesn't have an X-Ray SDK yet. That's not an excuse because that UDP daemon, if you use the SDK, all the SDK is gonna be doing is generating that JSON payload that you need to send through UDP to that daemon, but you can generate that payload yourself as well. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing on the demo here. So I have my application running, and as it's running, it's interacting with the services, and I'm, taking, I'm, I'm measuring all the time it takes to interact with Dynamo or with SQS or whatsoever. And at the end of that cycle, I mount that JSON that is expected by the X-ray daemon that's well documented on the X-ray documentation, and I send that through UDP. Again, the same concept, fire and forget, you're not introducing latency into your code, and behind the scenes, uh, the daemon will be decoupling that tracing aggregation API calls from your application, calling the HTTPS API, and sending that tracing information to your AWS account. You can run exactly that same thing uh, on-prem or any environment that has internet access and the right credentials to talk to your AWS account. Then your sysop support and, and, and sysadmin guys can go in and check that tracing and service map information or either consume those through the APIs. So demo time. Uh, this demo is available on a GitHub repo. We're gonna display the URL soon. Uh, but let's put it all together. Let's do custom metrics through UDP. 
Let's do logging and sending logs to CloudWatch logs, creating custom metrics out of those logs, and send tracing information. So let's say I have my EC2 instance running on my AWS account. I'm going to install all those three uh, daemons, collect D to receive metrics through UDP, X-ray daemon to receive JSON payload information about my tracing, and CloudWatch logs agent to monitor my application logs so we can send those logs to, to, to our AWS account. Then I have my application. And this is the pseudo code of that application. So all that application does, it runs on a loop, and the first two lines is just calculating the factorial number of 5,000, and then it's calculating on the second line uh, the 35th number on the Fibonacci sequence. These are just examples to consume some CPU and have some tests being done. And then we log those metrics to log files that are being uh, listened by CloudWatch agents. We send those metrics on how long it took to execute, uh, to, to calculate the factorial and Fibonacci uh, tests. We send that through CollectD. And we send tracing information uh, regarding all of those segments and sub-segment -seg sub execution time so you can clearly see what is the bottleneck on this execution loop. Then behind the scenes, those demos will be sending that information uh, to, to CloudWatch API or the X-Ray API so you can see your logs, have custom metrics, and have tracing information there. So demo time. So this demo is on GitHub under uh, the AWS Labs. Uh, we have lots of cool demos under AWS Labs, and lots of customers doesn't know that. Uh, so if you go to github.com and look for AWS Labs, once you get into the AWS Labs page, just search for the repo cloudwatch-xray-apm-demo, and you should see that. So let's see working. Okay. Okay. So for the sake of time, uh, I'm not going to run this live. I'm, I have a, a video that I recorded. But again, I strongly encourage all of you to test it out. So just clone the repo, follow the instructions, and you can run that on your own AWS account. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to set this up and start running. So we need to define the IAM roles. So if you go to that GitHub repo, you will have clear instructions. And that EC2, uh, the, the IAM EC2 role needs to have the right policies in place so the application can, one, send metrics to CloudWatch, two, send logs to CloudWatch logs, and three, send uh, tracing information to X-Ray. So what I'm doing here is creating an EC2 role. Just give it a name and some description. Then I'm gonna look for that role so I can attach some policies to that. And if you look at the readme, we have the specific information about what kind of policies we need for each one of X-Ray, CloudWatch logs, and CloudWatch metrics. I had already created those, so I'm just attaching that to the role. And I'm just expanding to show uh, how, what those policies look like. They're exactly how they're described on the repo. Now you create the EC2 instance. So I just use the latest Linux AMI. It can be a T2 micro. I select the VPC and the subnet that I want to run that on. And the only trick here is to make sure you select the proper IAM role that we just created and attach those policies. 
Otherwise, you won't be able to send that information to CloudWatch and X-Ray. Then we just add a name tag. And we put that on a security group that will allow us uh, to SSH the box. After a few minutes, uh, it's gonna show up. Of, of course, here we added that, so it's running. Now you can SSH to that EC2 instance to install the application. So you just copy and paste those commands. And what we're doing here, we're installing all the, the packages that are needed, all those X-ray agent, CloudWatch logs agent, collect the agent, and we are also cloning the repo and installing the application itself. And of course, configuring all those agents uh, to work properly. So once the application finishes installation, it will automatically create this uh, log group for you with two metric filters. The metric filters, again, is what can create custom metrics out of logs for you. And it will create the uh, CloudWatch dashboard for you. And I'm gonna pause here just to explain what we're doing here. So on the left-hand side, we have on the upper left, it's how long we're gonna be plotting how long is it taking to execute the factorial method uh, in seconds? And on the left bottom, we're gonna, we're gonna plot how long it's taking to calculate the 35th number on the Fibonacci sequence. These values are coming from my application sending those over UDP to CollectD and CollectD sending that to CloudWatch. On the right-hand side, we're plotting exactly those, those same values but now those values are coming out of the application logs. Then the CloudWatch logs agent are getting that and sending to CloudWatch logs. And then my metric filters are creating uh, metrics out of my logs arriving on CloudWatch logs. So ju that's just to give you the feeling how do you create custom metrics one way or another. Again, that latency benchmark, you can run that as well. Uh, it's under samples, latency, then latency.rb. Again, it's a Ruby script. All it does it get, is get a number as an input and will log as many lines as you ask on the log file and will send as many packages as you ask through UDP and report by the end how long it took to log and how long it took to uh, send those packages through UDP, so you can kind of get the feeling of latency introduced into the application. So we go to the root folder of the application. We just list, there's no logs on the logs folder, that means we didn't run anything yet. So we just run the latency test, in this case it's gonna run for, I guess, 100,000 log lines and 100,000 UDP packages. And you can see 1.4 against 0 0.85. Uh, and just to show that I'm actually logging that, if you take a look at the logs on the beginning of the log and at the end of the log, we're actually really logging that. So you can run that latency demo as well. So running the application, uh, once the application is installed, uh, you just go to the root folder of that, and all of those instructions are on the readme file or the git repo. Then you execute that on the background because we want to leave the application running, so it's always generating information for us. So I'm just checking the logs because I just started the application, so my application is running on a loop and generating logs. And Okay. Let me just get back, okay, 
I want to pause here because this is the line that we're interested about. So whenever we have my underscore app dot metrics, that is the flag to tell, hey, we're reporting metrics in this log line here. And then I say, hey, Factorio is taking this amount of seconds to execute and Fibonacci took 1.49 seconds to execute. So those are the values that we're gonna retrieve from CloudWatch logs to create custom metrics by using the metric filters. So my, my application is running. My application is finally running here. Uh, we just wanna check that those daemons are sending information, so if I tail the collect D log, we can see that every 20 seconds, every 30 seconds, no, every 20 seconds it's sending, aggregating those metrics and sending that to CloudWatch. I just configured those demos to report that. If you're in a production environment, you might not want to have this kind of information so you're not overlogging. Then we're gonna tail the lo CloudWatch logs agent. So as logs are being written by my application, it's every five seconds configured to get those new log lines and report and send those to CloudWatch logs. And finally, uh, we'll tail the X-ray daemon to make sure that it's actually receiving uh, payload uh, tracing information and sending that to X-ray. So this is my application running and sending information for all those three daemons. Now we can go back to the logs and we have our log group that is created when you install the app. Now we have that EC2 instance number and you can see that the logs are arriving there and you can lively tail those. And if you compare the SSH session with the one on the console, the time difference is like five seconds because I configured the log, log agent to send data every five seconds. You can configure that. Again, for that same log group, I have two metric filters uh, that I create the filter pattern uh, to actually filter for those metric lines and create custom metrics out of those values on those lines. So if I click test pa pattern, I see some results that are matching and I can use those variables V1 and V2 to create my metrics. So I can give a metric namespace, metric name, and value. And now those metrics are available for me to use, for example, on the dashboard. The same thing for the other metric. We're just selecting the different values. And that's how you create custom metrics out of logs on CloudWatch logs. Now, if we go to, to the dashboard to actually see those metrics, uh, we need to select the proper time window. So if we go and select, I guess, the last five minutes, 15 minutes, those metrics are there and they're matching because we are reporting the same values through UDP or through the logs. So when you look, you can see the timestamp, the value, the metric name. So that kind of gives you uh, an idea of how would you introduce custom metrics and make those available uh, to CloudWatch, being that through a UDP agent instrumenting your code or, or taking those values out of your application logs. So if we go to X-Ray, it's loading uh, the service map. Since my application is only a standalone application, there's no external services it's interacting with. I just see one circle uh, and everything is green because I'm not reporting any errors. Uh, and inside that I see the average execution time on my application. If I click the circle, you can see uh, a nice chart. And if you click view traces, then you can see the traces of the application. 
And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we'll look for the latest traces. So we choose, let's say, probably the last five minutes or one minute. And we we'll select the most recent trace as an example. And once you click that trace, on the top line, you can see the overall execution time. And we can spot on see that Fibonacci is by far my largest bottleneck on this execution here, right? That's, that's extremely helpful when you're troubleshooting or under pressure instead of going to log files to, to figure that out. Then you can click on the, on the segments or sub-segments to get more information. So you can have metadata being sent. You can have exception stack traces being sent. It's all a matter of adding that to that JSON payload that you're sending through UDP. And you can check the other uh, sub-segment as well and see exactly the same information. I think I put like in the annotations, what is the input parameter that I'm passing through to those methods, Fibonacci and uh, the factorial. If I had an exception, I could plot the stack trace so I can have the stack trace right here as well. And this is the raw data. This is the JSON payload that the application is mounting dynamically and sending through UDP. Uh, this is all documented on the X-ray uh, uh, documentation. And this is what actually the, does the X-ray SDK does for you. If you're using a programming language that's, that has an X-ray SDK, use that so you don't need to implement creating that JSON file. But if you're using a programming language that doesn't have an X-ray SDK yet, you can do it yourself. And that's exactly uh, what the demo is doing. So to terminate the environment, uh, we just delete, we stop the application, we shut down the EC2 instance, we delete the logs so we don't pay for that, and we delete the dashboard. Uh, not today, but probably uh, by the end of the week, all of those manual things that I'm doing here on this demo will not be needed because we, we're going to be releasing a CloudFormation template for the demo as well. Uh, so if you check like today, that's probably not going to be there. But if you check by the end of the week, it's, it, it will be there. So I stopped the application. It's not logging anything yet, anything anymore. Just make sure. We go back to the AWS account. Let's close this. We'll delete the logs. I don't need those logs. This is just a demo, just a test. I don't want to be paying for that, so we delete that. And we delete the dashboard as well. So this is the demo. Let me switch back. So again, the demo URL is here. Please try it out. Let me know what you think. And some best practices on AWS. So again, it's really important to have custom metrics, centralized logs, tracing information, and service map with X-ray helps a lot as well. But best practices for implementing APM on AWS. Design your applications to report custom metrics. And when you do that, Choose meaningful metrics that will bring value to you. Use a new DP demo whenever you can to send those metrics so you don't introduce latency into your code. Plan carefully your logging and metric strategy. You don't want to over send metrics or over log or send lots of log that you don't use to CloudWatch. So you might have to plan ahead of time. Do you want to log different things into different log files? Do you want to have a specific log file just for metrics or not? Things like that. Use X-Ray for distributed tracing and troubleshooting. Deliver CloudWatch dashboards, alarms, and self-healing automations as part of your application. So as you move on on the APM journey on AWS, start by introducing custom metrics into your application. 
Once you have that, deliver your application with a dashboard so you can share meaningful information about how to maintain, how to support, and how to monitor that application with other teams. Once you have that, you might want to go a step further to set up CloudWatch alarms that might notify someone whenever a metric crosses a threshold, for instance. But what you really want to do is go a step further and do self-healing automation so whenever you have a specific error happening that is triggered by a threshold being crossed by a custom metric, you might call, let's say, a Lambda code to fix that, that error before your users even see that or before you, you, you ping someone from the support team at 2 a.m. in the morning. So there's a lot of things that can be automated and improve performance of your, of your team. Be aware of service limits such as put log events, put metric data, put trace segment, put telemetric records. Those are API calls to CloudWatch and X-Ray. So usually they have limits. Let's say you can only call them five times a second. So if you have several applications, hundreds of applications, sending log information to CloudWatch logs using CloudWatch logs agent, and they're running all in parallel, you might reach those service limits. So you need to carefully plan for that. So talk to your AWS team, your technical account manager, solutions architect, or the service team, because you really don't want to get into those limits. Leverage AWS service metric together with your own custom metrics. So on your dashboard, it might make sense to plot not only your custom metrics, but CPU utilization, for instance. If you're using Kinesis, Kinesis metrics provided on CloudWatch as well. If you use RDS or DynamoDB. So it's not only your custom metrics. They're really, really important. But they're, they're even more meaningful when you cross-match them and plot them together with other metrics available. It's all about monitoring your application logic as well as all of the stack that you're using in your application. So to close out, I would like to remember all of you that everything fails all the time. So if you have the right metrics in place, you can do better monitoring. You can catch errors before your user does it. You have better customers. Uh, happier customers, happier bosses, everyone will be happy. Uh, I'm putting some resources here uh, with some nice demos that you can also try out uh, on the APM space. Uh, really, really good stuff. I encourage you guys to look at. And again, complete the evaluation so can, we can only always bring better content for you. And thanks a lot. I'm going to take uh, questions and comments by the hallway. Thank you.